Hey guys, I'm Derek. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a piece of 22 gauge steel here. Maybe it'll focus in enough so that you can see that. Anyway, this is a piece of 22 gauge steel and I'm going to try and weld it again with flux core. Now, most of these flux core machines are rated to go down to 18 gauge. And my assumption at this point is, is that that is being able to weld a straight bead without doing special techniques or anything like that in order to get a good weld bead profile. Now, in my last video, I got a bunch of tips and suggestions on how to do it better. Some people said I did a pretty good job. Other people said I was just making a video that would attract viewers so that I could make money and I had no idea what I was doing. And I pretty much straight up admitted that right at the beginning of the video. I never started off that video, nor am I gonna start off this video telling you that this is how to successfully weld 22 gauge steel with flux core. That's not the purpose of this. It's to show a guy who's a DIYer that's brand new at welding. And I say brand new, I've been welding for three or four years now. Well, about, yeah, three or four years now. But I only do it on the weekends and occasionally on the weeknights. I do not do it for a day job whatsoever. I've never been to school for it. I'm self-taught slash YouTube taught. This is in no way, shape or form a tutorial on how to do this. We're just going to try it again here with taking some of the tips and suggestions from that last video into consideration and uh, going ahead and trying and just seeing how I can do with it here with a different welder, different time and using some of the tips and suggestions. All right, so this time we're gonna do something a little bit different and we're gonna try my predictable fillet weld with a T-joint just for fun. Uh, I don't know that this has any practical application in the real world. In fact, I will say this about this entire video i have never needed to weld 22 gauge steel there's very little practical application for this for me other than uh, just creating content and having fun with it so i'm hoping that the uh, eighth inch steel welding table will serve as a backing for this or a heat sink i'm just simply not going to go out and buy copper like a lot of guys suggested i don't do this enough to make that worth i don't know what it even cost me but i i just don't need it i'll, I'll really never do it and if I do need to do it, then I guess we'll go out and buy the copper. But uh, the machine set as low as we can. I have to admit, um, I really don't love the wire size I'm using. It's uh, 35 thousandths wire or uh, uh, nine tenths of a, what is it? Nine tenths of a millimeter. I can't remember the uh, conversion over to the metric system, but it's a thicker wire, uh, 30 thousandths flex core wire or a 030 wire, or I think eight millimeter or 0 0.08, and whatever it is, uh, that would be a better wire for this, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway, because I just don't have any 30 thousandths wire here on me. So that's a pretty ugly little BB just sitting on there. There's no penetration at all. So I do think I'm gonna turn the welder up just a little bit. All right, now we're blowing holes. So I'm gonna go about halfway between where I started and where I am now. So that is what we ended up here with my first attempt here with this machine. I do think I'm gonna try a different machine and see how it goes. Uh, these two pieces are welded together, although it is horribly ugly. But uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get this switched over to a different machine and we'll give it another try. All right, I'm not exactly sure where I left off the other night because I decided to stop because I figured I better get some 30 thousandths wire to really do a decent job here. 
Also, the synergetic control on the other welding machine, I was wondering if it would help, but it actually threw it off even worse, I think, of getting a half decent weld here. And so I went back to my trusty old Forney Easy Weld 140 MP. Not that there's anything wrong with that other uh, welding machine I was using, but this I just have more experience with. And then the machine itself isn't always trying to self-adjust for whatever feedback it's getting from the weld. It is just whatever I set it at, and I'll have a little bit more controllability uh, over this machine. All right, just to be clear, I am now running with 30 thousandths wire and the Forney Easy Weld 140 MP. All right, so I've got three tack welds here at the end. I hope you can see them. That's uh, maybe one inch, maybe a little over an inch. I'm gonna try and be really patient and work with that the best I can. It's actually really not turning out too bad. Our tack down here popped off. So that's pretty much what I ended up with right there. You can tell that is some pretty thin material. I don't think you had any burn throughs on the bottom. And you can kind of see some distortion on the back side, but you know what? Nothing about welding 22 gauge steel with flux core is ideal. And so that's why we're ending up with kind of these results that we're ending up with. I'm gonna say that for the size of the material and what it is, that's really not that bad. So just to give you an idea of what everything else looked like, that was the first welder with the synergetic control where the computer is trying to control it. Uh, I think the first really bad burn throughs there were uh, because my wire feed speed was too high. I think I did try running like a really fast speed in here somewhere. Um, I tried just different methods. I think, you know, you saw what I tried. But uh, just being really patient and trying really, really hard, that's about what I ended up with there. I've just got this piece of material that I cut out and it's not exactly perfect by any means and I'm just going to try and spot weld it back in at least well enough to where I don't know it's held in pretty good and maybe a spot welded just all the way around so let's go ahead and give it a try sorry about the glove being in the way now I tell you what with this thin stuff there's just almost nothing you can do to keep it from warping Well, that was not good. 
Well, I just blew too much of the metal apart. Yeah, I'm just getting a little frustrated with it here. It keeps kind of just blowing the metal further out and apart. Well, there you have it. That's pretty much what I got. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. It's not, not really worth my time because of the way it's going. Yes, I started picking up speed a little bit there in the end. Uh, but from the beginning, you know, I had little, little defects in it that I knew were just going to get worse and worse. Just the fact that every time the metal would melt right where I put the wire, it was separating and creating a wider gap, which is why it ended up welding itself to the table a little bit. So I, I'm no expert in this, and I know that there's guys that say that they can do it or whatever, and that's fine. Like, I'm not telling you that you can't in this video. Like, I'm not gonna claim that it's impossible or anything like that. I'm just gonna tell you that it's hard and that uh, unless you're like really willing to go out and buy like the copper backing and, you know, do all the other tips and tricks that everybody has, to get this to go successfully then then you know I guess have at it but I don't think you can just slap it on your table and go to work not with uh, 030 flux core wire and uh, basic flux core machine thanks for watching everybody I hope to see you in the next video